we'll talk about hepatocellular carcinoma. It is the most common primary liver malignancy, and it's, it, it is increased risk in patients with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and cirrhosis. HCC induces angiogenesis of small arterial feeders and decrease the blood flow through the portal tracts, leading to a net increase in arterial flow. So that's why we expect to see the hyperenhancement on arterial phase and washout on venous phase. And we can apply the CT and MRI LIRADS for patients at high risk of HCC, including patients with cirrhosis, chronic hepatitis B, and patients with current or prior HCC. The important major features in the diagnosis of HCC include arterial phase hyperenhancement, larger lesions are obviously more suspicious, and also the presence of enhancing capsule, non-peripheral washout, and threshold growth. So in the correct population, when we encounter a liver mass, we can use the LIRAS table to figure out how suspicious a lesion is for HCC. There are also ancillary features that are suspicious for HCC and malignancy. So if we see a nodule uh, in a nodule architecture, non-enhancing capsule, mosaic architecture, fat in the mass or blood products in the mass, these ancillary features are also very suspicious for HCC. And there are other features that are suspicious for malignancy, but not HCC in particular, including ultrasound visibility as a discrete nodule, interval growth, but not quite reaching the threshold, corona enhancement, and fat sparing in a solid mass. Signs of benignity include size stability, size reduction, enhancement paralleling the blood pool, undistorted vessels, and iron in the mass. There are also special categories in the LIRADS 2018, including a LRTIV, which means tumor, tumor in vein. And that refers to unequivocal enhancing soft tissue in the vein, regardless of whether or not we can see the parenchymal mass. And there's also the LRM category that's suspicious for metastatic disease. And these can look like the classic targetoid mass, or it, it can be a non-targetoid mass with the infiltrative growth appearance. Here's a classic example of a hepatocellular carcinoma. You can appreciate that there is arterial phase hyperenhancement of this mass in a nodular liver, so uh, enhancing mass in a cirrhotic, you have to be worried about HCC. And on the venous phase images, you can appreciate there is some subtle washout because now the mass is enhancing less than the background liver. And then you can really appreciate on the cinematic how you can accentuate the conspicuity of the mass because frankly, the mass wasn't that obvious on the, on the routine images. Here is another example of an HCC. So you can appreciate on the arterial phase that it has very heterogeneous arterial phase hyperenhancement. The MIP image on the left helps to bring out the very disordered tumor neovascularity. So you can appreciate very irregular feeding vessels in this mass. That's also would be a sign of malignancy. And on the venous phase images, you can appreciate washout. So it's checking all the boxes for hepatocellular carcinoma. I like this case because it sh nicely shows the ancillary feature of intratumoral fat. So here we have a very heterogeneous looking mass that has some internal fat in it. I think having fat in a liver mass is a very helpful feature because it helps to narrow down your differential into either HCC or adenoma as we have talked about before. The differential for fat containing liver masses is a little bit broader. But in essence, if you see a fat and soft tissue containing mass in a liver, typically we are encountering either adenoma or HCC. Other things on the list would include hepatic adrenal rest tumor, angiomyolipoma, teratoma, METS, and liposarcoma. 
Here we see lesions that contain only fat. Usually we're dealing with steatosis, but we can also get lipoma, synthoma, and liposarcomas. Here's an example of the LRTIV category in which we have a very heterogeneously enhancing infiltrative looking mass on arterial phase. There is washout on the venous phase, and we can appreciate on the coronal images that this mass is directly invading the IVC. So that's why it is in the LRTIV category. And the arterial phase images are helpful in distinguishing the tumor thrombus versus the bland thrombus because the tumor thrombus would enhance on the arterial phase. Similar example here that now we have tumor invasion into the portal vein. And in fact, it's hard for us to see the infiltrative mass in the background liver, but we can appreciate that the portal vein is very expanded with this filling defect. And then also that filling defect has some enhancement on the arterial phase, indicating that it is tumor thrombus rather than bland thrombus. And HCC can also spontaneously bleed. This is a big mass that's in the right hepatic lobe. And you can appreciate that there are foci of active contrast extravasation. And spontaneous rupture can occur in up to 15%, and it has very poor prognosis. I would also like to mention a subtype of HCC called the fibrolamellar subtype. It's less than 1% of HCC in the United States usually occurring in younger patients without underlying chronic liver disease. We see calcifications, central stellate scar, and on arterial phase, we may see heterogeneous enhancement, and on venous phase, there may be variable enhancement and variable enhancement of the central scar. So here's an example of a fibrolamellar HCC in which we can see a heterogeneously enhancing mass on the arterial phase. There's a central scar with calcifications. On venous phase, it's also heterogeneously enhancing. And on the coronal MIP, you can appreciate again that tumor neovascularity. All these feeding vessels look very irregular, and that is a sign that it's an aggressive lesion. Because superficially, when we think about a lesion with a central scar, you may think back to an FNH also has a central scar. But I would say the key differential between fibrolamellar HCC and FNH is how heterogeneous the lesion is. And even the feeding vessels, if they look really irregular, you would be more worried about fibrolamellar rather than a FNH. Calcifications is also a nice feature that can help us narrow down the differential. Frequently, we see granulomatous disease with calcifications, and we see those as the diffuse, small punctate calcifications throughout the liver. Fibrolamellar HCC can calcify, and it's usually the central stellate scar. Other masses, such as adenoma, the other types of HCC, cholangio, they tend not to calcify. METs can also calcify depending on the source of the primary tumor. Here is another example of fibrolamellar HCC. This case is more hypoenhancing rather than hyperenhancing, and it doesn't quite have that central scar. So when I look at a case like this, it would be very hard for me to come down hard that this is a fibrolamellar HCC. But going back to my initial slide about making a decision about whether this is benign or malignant, you would say that, well, this mass is heterogeneously enhancing in its, the borders are more scalloped borders, so it has aggressive features. So right off the bat, I'm going down the malignant path. And from a clinical perspective, I think that's the most important decision. What about this case? Superficially, when you first look at this case, you may say, well, it's kind of peripheral nodular enhancement, kind of. And then it's a little bit progressive. So is it a hemangioma, you may ask? But then when you look at the features more closely, on the arterial phase, the nodular enhancement on the periphery is not quite blood pool, and it's more heterogeneous looking. 
So this turns out to be another case of HCC, but I put it here because this is the wolf in sheep's clothing, that when you're looking at it superficially, you may be fooled into thinking that it's a benign lesion. But when you look at the heterogeneity of the lesion, you should go down the malignant path and not be fooled. Similarly with this case, when you first look at it, well, it's got a central scar and it's hypervascular, so is it an F and H? But again, if you look at the enhancement pattern more closely, it is hypervascular, but it's not, it's kind of heterogeneous, not homogeneously enhancing like the examples of F, F and H that I have shown. And on the venous phase images, it is washing out relative to the background liver. So those two are aggressive features that should prompt you to go down the malignant path. Similarly, on the MIP, you can appreciate the feeding vessels, they look irregular. <clears throat> so that's another worrisome sign that it's a malignant lesion. Next, we'll talk about cholangiocarcinoma. It's the second most common primary hepatic neoplasm, usually found in older adults. And it can be classified based on location into intrahepatic, extrahepatic, and hyalur. And the risk factors are chronic inflammation or cholestasis. And it can have different growth patterns into periductal infiltrative, mass forming, or intraductal. On arterial phase, we see heterogeneous enhancement. And on venous phase, we expect progressive enhancement due to the fibrotic stroma. Secondary signs include capsular retraction and biliary obstruction. Here's an example of a typical periductal infiltration of the cholangiocarcinoma, in which we see this infiltrative hyalur mass and also helpful secondary signs of the intrahepatic biliary ductal dilatation that would clue us in that it's a cholangiocarcinoma. This is a more discrete mass forming type in which we see heterogeneous arterial enhancement with progressive enhancement. And this progressive enhancement of a heterogeneous lesion would be a good imaging appearance for cholangio. This one is a rather subtle looking mass, but we can also appreciate that there is the heterogeneously enhancing lesion with deforming the liver contour. So if you see some extra bumps of the liver contour, look very closely at the texture to make sure that there's not a mass there. This is the intraductal growth pattern of cholangiocarcinoma. They're kind of like IPMNs of the bile ducts. So you, because of the high mucin content, you expect to see very T2 bright lesion, heterogeneous enhancement, hot on PET. So this is an intraductal cholangiocarcinoma. And finally, we'll wrap up on a brief discussion on liver metastases. Obviously having a history of primary malignancy would help. We may see rounded, well-circumscribed masses that can be single or multiple. The enhancement pattern really depends on the underlying malignancy. So typically breast, lung, head and neck, colon would be hypoenhancing. Primary from thyroid, renal, neuroendocrine, melanoma, and choriocarcinoma would be hyperenhancing. We see cystic meds from colon and ovary and also gist and amongst other things. Calcified meds tend to come from mucinous, GI or ovarian primary, or from bone tumors. Here's a case of metastatic cholangiocarcinoma in which we have this classic targetoid appearance in which you, we have a brighter peripheral enhancing rim and central hypoenhancement. So this target appearance is great for metastatic disease. And you can appreciate the sheer tumor burden on these cinematic rendered images. Here is a case of metastatic angiosarcoma. Superficially, when you first look at this, maybe I can fool you into thinking that it's hemangiomas, but obviously all those liver, all those lung mets in the lung bases would give away that it's a case of angiosarcoma. And sometimes these liver mets can grow to be very large. This is a large solitary colon cancer met that may initially fool you into thinking that is a primary lesion arising from the liver. 
Then some of the meds that are classically hypoenhancing, if you have arterial phase images, you could, may appreciate a subtle enhancing rim on arterial phase images that can make you a little bit more confident about the malignant behavior. And with these subtle lesions, you may have to change the windowing of your liver to really bring out the enhancement pattern. In cystic meds, this is a case of gist that you can really appreciate the thickened internal septations that would clue you in that it's not just a simple cyst. And sometimes these cystic meds can be rather tricky. This is a case of metastatic mucinous colon cancer. When you first look at this, you may walk by and think that it's just a cyst. But you, when you look at the features closely, it's got some internal septations, irregular wall, that perhaps you can appreciate a little bit better on the accompanying MRI, that is not just a simple cyst. As I said before, meds can calcify, and this is a case of mucinous colon cancer. So usually these calcified meds are from mucinous primaries, either colon or GYN. And sometimes these cases are very difficult. This is a humbling outside case that was in a young woman. You have two hypodense liver lesions, a little bit of faint calcifications. You can't really tell the enhancement pattern or the margins very well. Nothing was done. And then a few years later, patient came back for follow-up and they have grown to be really big. And these turned out to be metastatic pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. When you look back at this lesion, the size-wise is at that kind of 1.5 centimeter threshold. And you can't tell for sure that it's benign. So Honestly, something should have been done. She should have gotten a liver protocol, CT or MRI to further characterize these things. But real life, it's, it can be tricky. And I've summarized the major imaging findings of these hypervascular lesions. So looking at the enhancement pattern in arterial and venous phase is critical. And there's also ancillary features such as capsule, fat or bleeding that would narrow down your differential to anoma and HCC. Central scar can be seen in FNH and fibrolamellar. Calcification is really good for fibrolamellar and certain types of meds. Vascular invasion, you see them most commonly with HCC, but also with cholangio. In summary, multiphase CT is highly accurate in the initial evaluation of focal liver lesions more than one centimeter. And the accurate lesion characterization depends on the enhancement characteristics, associated features, background liver, and extrahepatic findings. And thank you very much. Mm -hmm.